and buy items. I'm going to create a database table if they don't exist. If that database table does exist, I'm going to update it. I'm going to do a SQL update or SQL alter table to, to, to sync them up with what that pogo actually looks like. At this point, my app is up and running. I got a database, I got a web server, I'm running on port 9090. So let's see it. Now if I go to localhost 9090, I get a 404. That's okay, I don't have a default index field there. In a real app, I would create that. But we can see that there is a bookstore there. And if I come in and look at this book controller, we'll see that I get a full application out of the box. I can come in here and say, well, there's one book called JMoss at Work. It's a 300-page book by Scott Davis. I got a whole nother book in here. I can say this book, GIS for Web Developers. That's a 250-page book by Scott Davis. You can see I got a list. You can see I can automatically sort these things by however I would like. I've got full crud. In addition to being able to show them, I can edit them and delete them. I can say, oh, it's not a 250-page book. What was I thinking? It was a 251-page book. And we can see I can delete it here. What do you think? Pretty cool stuff? Almost as cool as Ruby on Rails. Almost as cool as Ruby on Rails, exactly. Yeah, except it runs on the JVM. I'm working for a lot of conservative government organizations right now. One of the gigs I'm working on is with the Portland Transit Authority, uh, Portland, Oregon. I'm working on them to help uh, create a Google Maps-like uh, situation for them. They want to have cool, slippy maps like that. But like most organizations, I don't blame them at all. They said, we can't exactly put our mission-critical stuff on someone else's server. So I'm working with them to create a full open source stack to provide these things. Groovy and Grails is going to be driving these things behind the scenes. And they don't care, it's Java. They're happy with Exactly, Java. exactly. They're JWE developers, and so boom. That's freaking huge. It is. That is just amazing. It is. Yeah. Now, there is JRuby. Now, JRuby is a really strong project. And Charles Nutter is one of the speakers on the No Fluff Tour. He's a smart guy. But his goal is to get Ruby on Rails to run on the JVM. And that's great if you already know Ruby. And that's great if you already know Rails. So that's a one valid path. But these guys didn't know Ruby and they didn't know Rails. They were Java developers. And this is not just Portal Transit Authority. These are a lot of companies I work with. They're Java developers. And so something like this, oh yeah, we already know Spring. We already know Hibernate. We already know these kinds of things. This is going to run on the JVM. It's going to run on JBoss or WebSphere or WebLogic or Apache Geronimo or whatever they already have in place. This leverages their existing infrastructure. But the cool thing is, is how dynamic it is. I come back and look at this book list and I say, you know what, gosh, you know, uh, title is great, but page is an author. No, 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 no. I want to see title, author, pages. So what am I going to do? I'm going to come back in here to this list, GSP. And if we look through this, it's mostly HTML. Now, we will see some Grails tags in there. And if you've done any kind of JSTL, that's going to seem right as home to you. But we can see in here i got some sortable columns. And what I want to do is I want to take that author and I want to move it up. Boom. Oh yeah, and I better move the TD as well. Author. Boom. Don't see silly question marks in here. Title, author, ID, pages. What do you think that stuff's doing? No safe references to these. How many times have you had to say, if book.title is null, then blah, 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 blah. So this is a nice shorthand way of saying, guess what, if it's null, don't throw up. Just kind of skip over trace and move by the business. Now, what's really cool is we're using it here. Since we're iterating through a list of books, it is a default variable that we can define. Now, it would never be null in this context because I'm running through this. But if I was just trying to pull something out of the air and I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't get a null pointer there, I could use question marks all the way across. I could say, well, if null, if, excuse me, if it exists and it has an author method on it, I can question mark, question mark, question mark all the way through and make sure this is completely the same. No way that it's going to be null in this context, but you get the idea. Right? So all I did was I moved a couple lines around, hit save, came back, refreshed. Now that's 
that's cool. But that was HTML. With Grails, you can do that with your code as well. I could go into the controller, make some changes, hit save, and boom, those changes would be applied. I could add new fields to book, hit save, and those changes would be applied. I don't have to bounce the server. The server's up and running. I make my changes, save, refresh, save, refresh, save, refresh. Since it's you're really editing remarkable. the... I'm sorry? Yeah. I'm sorry. Go Can ahead. You, since you're editing the generated files, um, how do you handle the changes if you make changes to the source? So I agree with you. And that's why I said earlier that we generated these things. And I wanted to bring them up so we could see GSPs and see uh, controllers and things like that. A lot of times, I won't do that kind of thing. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I'm going to come in and let's say we want to see a publisher. So all right, web server's up and running. I'm going to say I want a new publisher.groovy. And a publisher ought to have things like a location and a name and yeah, 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 you get the idea. Now when it comes to the controller, I'm going to say new publisher controller. And actually, I have a shortcut here to build that thing out real quickly because I do this so much. <laughs> that one line there, def scaffold equals publisher. Scaffold means I want you to create all of those views in memory. I want you to create the controller in memory, all of those kind of list, save, edit, update, create, all those kinds of things. Now, actually, O.5 just came out this week, and so I've never actually tried creating a new controller on the fly, but let's see what happens here. Oh, okay. I think bad things just occurred. <laughs> you think? Yeah, all right. So let's bounce this. Once this fella is up and running, then we, ah, uh, yeah, bad things occurred. Yeah, Grails runs on top of Java, so you still get stack traces until the cows come home and everything else. All right, that was unfair. We'll give it a running start now. But I'll be able to demonstrate to you once it knows what a publisher is and everything. I'll make some changes, I'll add some publishers, go back, make changes to the domain class, come back into it. All right, we're in development mode. We're running on port 9090, so I now see a publisher controller. And I'm going to have all the same capabilities on that publisher. But you'll see that there is nothing hanging out in the views directory. I don't have publisher GSPs in there, and my publisher controller is literally a one-liner here. But I'll be able to come in here and say, all right, yeah, I want to um, say that I, one of my publishers is in California, O'Reilly. Another one of my publishers is in Texas. That's pragmatic. So we've got a whole list right here that I was able to do. But now I said, oh, you know what? Um, we probably ought to, what, in addition to a publisher, a location, maybe we want to have an address. I think you get the idea. I could go on and on like this. Now the web server is still up and running. But I'm going to come back in here right now and click on new publisher. It'll take a little while to catch up. It's going to take a little while to catch up. <laughs> but when this form does come up, we're going to now see a publisher form that's got name, location, and address on it as well. So you begin seeing how quickly you can rev these types of things. I love this. I'm, a, I'm an independent contractor. When I sit down with my clients, when we're gathering requirements, I don't write it up in a Word document. right? Fire up Grails and say, okay, what do you have? Okay, you sell blocks, oh, you've got widgets, you've got locations, you've got this, that, and the other. We're coding these things as we go. Pull them up and say, is this kind of what you're looking like this, and that, and the other? And the clients will say, oh, that's cool. This is a nice prototyping tool. And they're like, no, this is your application. Now, if you don't like this look and feel, don't worry about it. This is CSS. We'll skin it. We'll make it do these kinds of things. But I am sitting there building the application live as we are gathering requirements. What type of forms validation is this? Generate this is, I'm using Spring validation under the covers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you had a question earlier. I was going to ask, um, how is uh, 
association panel use of that ORM. Because ah. a publisher will have a list of books. What would that look like? Exactly. What did you say? You said a publisher would has many this. books? Well, yeah. Has many. There we go. Static has many. Uh, the instance publisher is going to have instance methods on it like save and delete, oh, yeah. but the class variable has things on it like list, find, get. And it's really cool. It has a lot of dynamic things. I mean, it's got find by location, find by name, find by address. Those are method calls. It's got find by name and address, or find by name or address. If you have dates and things like that, it has find dates between the, you know, I mean, there, there are all kinds of things you can do in this kind of thing. So this is Static Has Many Books book. And then on the other side, what I will do to kind of close that loop, I'll come in here and say, all right, book has a publisher. And I will say Static belongs to. Yeah, I was right the first one. So that now kind of closes that. Oh, and that's static so that the relationship is, is only Find once it. per instance, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. per, it's only stored once, but each instance will have instance specific data through that. Exactly. Product. So the static is defining meta information for the mounting, not for the instances. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Are the words has many and belongs to magic words, or is this just a label you came up with? The, <laughs> I wish I could take credit for this. Yeah, they, they, no, these guys, this is part of the framework. So, I mean, what Grails does is it looks for those kinds of static methods, and then it and then it goes in and it says, oh, yeah, okay, well, this is what this means, this is what that means, this is what the other means. Okay. So it would be really bad for us that make typos all the time. Yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> there are other things we can do in here. We can do things like um, static constraints. And so we can do things like that. We can say title um, can't be blank. We can say author has a max size of you know uh, 50 characters. There are all kinds of validation things we can do up here mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Is that part of validation, or is that also going to affect the schema? It's going to affect the schema. So under the covers, so as, you know, title right now is going to show up as a, as a bar chart 255, yeah, yeah, author is going to show up as a bar chart 50. But then, yeah, because you're, you're in the, the domain object, it's going to be affecting the scheme, not nothing to do with the Exactly, exactly, exactly. That is sweet. Yes. Um, you mentioned you're using Hibernate. Mm -hmm. Is that just straight Hibernate? It's just straight Hibernate. Hey, now what you're using the is something called RM? GORM which is the Grails object relational mapper, so it's a thin wrapper over Hibernate. But you, there are examples out there of using Grails with EJB3. Okay. There are these kinds That's of things going getting. on. So yeah, so it's not what you get out of the box, but since this is Java, you can do anything you want to do. Anything you can do in Java, you can do it here. But the further you get away from the norms, the more you lose out of this convention over configuration. Notice we've got all these things wired together here. If I've got an object <laughs> called book, well, I've got something called book controller. And in my pages, I've got book under there as well. In my controller, when I have a list method, technically a name closure, but if I have a name closure named list, by default, it will correspond with a file called list.gsp. When I have something called edit, it corresponds with edit.gsp. So those are those conventions that are really nice. You're not bound to them. You can always get out of them, but the more out you get, the less kind of magic just occurs here. Yeah. On the scaffolding, um, if I want to deploy this as a web, can I automatically replace the scaffolding with generating classes so that you know when I start the server, there's no uh, creation of class transfer? Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, you saw me do Grails generate all. But the, so the Grails generate all will replace your scaffolding code? Because you generate a class from the publisher, you, you set the scaffolding code. Mm -hmm. And so it will we'll replace that, or will it just generate something and ignore that in the first? It does the right thing. If you say just scaffold, 
but there's a list GSP in here. You get to selectively overwrite. If it exists on disk, it'll pay attention to that. But if it doesn't exist, it'll just kind of do it in memory. So if I'm doing just pure boilerplate type stuff and everything like that, when I'm when I'm prototyping, I'll say dust scaffold, dust scaffold, dust scaffold all over the place. But if I want to change the way that list looks, or I want to you know, change the CSS or change various things like that. What I'll do is I'll generate that, kind of have artifacts on disk that I can hand out. So in reality, in your, in your life cycle, the initial deployments are all scaffolding, but as things become mature, they, the scaffolding goes away because it's more stable. Exactly. I got, I got exactly, it. exactly. So early on, when I'm just trying to figure out the relationships between all these things, I let scaffolding handle all the look and feel um, so we can kind of keep up. But as things solidify, then I begin generating those things and I begin a hand tweaking those kinds of when you do hand tweak and then change the domain model, how do you handle these? Then you need to go back and begin adding those things. So if I already had artifacts on disk and I added another publisher information, then I would have to go back and hand edit those kinds of GSPs to keep them to Is it portable across servers or one type of server you can use for that? I can type in Grails war, and that creates a standard war file with a web imp lib and web imp classes and things like that. So I'm running about groovy.com on a Tomcat 5.5.20 server right now, MySQL 4. something. something type of thing. So those are the things that I'm using in production. So you can absolutely throw it against any JDBC database and any standard server container. Deploy it to JBoss or MyC or, uh, or Geronimo or WebLogic or Web Security. I'm getting the official uh, from the back of the room because there's hot pizza getting cold here. But I am so glad you're jazzed about this stuff. Yeah. Why don't we go ahead and eat dinner right now? We can talk more about that. But then this presentation this afternoon well, or this evening will give a lot more answers in terms of how Java 3 works together. But thanks so much. I'm glad you enjoyed this.